morning, afternoon, evening team. Uh, we'll wait for a few more minutes and then we'll get started. This is JJ. Hey, JJ. I was wondering if we're having something like an awkward silence con contest. I was trying that and uh, Justin Cormack obviously lost that. But, uh... <laughs> you've, you've been on track to win, Andres. <laughs> I think it's always interesting when you join a little early and then you see in larger hey, meetings. Everyone. Hey, Brandon. Hey, Eli. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, this um, pass, is this passcode thing new? This is the first time I, I got the, the prompt. Oh, the passcode? Yeah. yeah, I think they rolled it out a couple of days ago and it's causing everyone to be unhappy and all the Yeah, I'm gonna go update the readme. <laughs> everyone is enforcing it, I guess. I didn't I didn't get the prompt for password, it just locked me in. Well the the meeting update was updated with a new URL that includes the password. Wait, that's what I saw. <laughs> yeah, so uh, That's making it unclear if that's really a password per se. <laughs> it, uh, I mean, there are things that you rely on uh, laziness. And this is one of those things where you won't remember, therefore, it's secure. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's more of uh, preventing, preventing bots from trying to randomly guess Zoom ID is like the thing. Yeah, but given that the calendar is public with the link that includes the <laughs> yeah. password, it's, it's not entirely clear how effective that's going to be in the long run. Um, yeah. I mean, actually writing the password next to it and the text is probably more effective. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, <clears throat> All right, let's get uh, let's get started. Uh, I will need two scripts. I it took some took <coughs> took on a subscribe. Thank you. Anyone? Any update? Anyone uh, volunteering for scribing? Uh, so we have few things that I think we'd want to cover. Um, uh, please, everyone that's there, uh, mark your attendance and then uh, mark if you have any updates that's going on. Uh, I'm going to put Vinay on the spot to give an update on white paper. Good. Yeah, sure thing, JJ. Uh, right now? Uh, not right now, so as we go through. Oh, sure. All right, so Justin, Cameron, Mark, Kite, Vinay, TK. I think that's a couple of new folks in the in the call that are not in the the meeting minutes, maybe we can meeting minutes. So should we call them out? Yeah, maybe do some introductions. Cool. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm new. <clears throat> so I'm Tanner Enough. I'm the uh, I'm a senior manager for cloud security architecture and DevSecOps architecture at Lowe's. Uh, we're a big proponent of CNCF. Uh, we use a lot of the tooling that's in the incubation stage. Uh, so I thought um, uh, I'd take the opportunity to to join up, start steering the the community towards uh, some of the products that we're using, uh, some of the products that we intend to uh, contribute to. Thank you. I think I'm a, I'm a next one who joined. I wasn't sure if I'm the only one. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Eli Nistorf. I am 
with their ByteDance, uh, probably some of you heard about this, but if I say TikTok, uh, probably everyone will start, start smiling. Uh, yeah, I'm an engineering manager there working on security infrastructure and infrastructure security in general. Uh, big fan of uh, Spiffy and Spire. And uh, yeah, we're rebuilding lots of uh, new stuff in our infrastructure and uh, being early adopters of lots of uh, CNCF projects, uh, but I'm more on security side. So thought my uh, points might be valuable for uh, different things we are working on here. So uh, this is why I decided to join and uh, looking forward to learn from all of you guys. Welcome, Eli. Thank you. Uh, Hi, I'm Trishank. Um, not entirely new, but I'd introduce myself again. Uh, I'm a security engineer at Datadog um, and I'm involved with some uh, CNCF security projects like Tuff, Intoto, Notary V2, CNAB. Um, I know some of you folks here. Nice to see you again. Nice to see all, all of you who are new. I'm also here to uh, follow developments in the, in the SIG security white paper, which I'm very, very excited to uh, learn from and contribute to. Thanks. Awesome, thank you. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, Aradhana also had trouble with passcode logging in. So she's trying to log in. I think she has some presentation uh, for today. All right, so today we have a few things. Uh, one major update that I have <coughs> is, uh, I think most of you have seen, there is, uh, there was a noting for uh, SIG co-chair and Emily Fox, uh, had, the results are out and Emily Fox has been selected as co-chair uh, by the TOC. And thanks to TOC and uh, thanks to you all for uh, chiming in on uh, how wonderful Emily has uh, been able to help uh, and be part of this group. So I did link the results uh, issue there uh, later today, I'll do a PR uh, to the uh, to the repo to make the make the required changes happen. But uh, I don't think Emily could join today. But if she watches the video, congratulations, Emily. Um, the second update that I had is. Uh, I don't know how many of you attended the last uh, week's assessment thing. Uh, Brandon, if you want to, if there is anything that we can update on that, that'll be good. Yeah, so um, so we're still in the process of, we, we sent out to the poll. Um, if you want to be involved with, basically we, we've, we're coming to the end of the first five security assessments. Um, so we kind of want to take a step back uh, look at everything, see whether there are ways in which we can improve uh, on the process, on the documentation, and you know, try and uh, kind of see what are what are the next things for security assessments. So uh, there is an issue that's open that talks about this. Let me link it. Uh, I'll link it in the meeting minutes and the chat. Um, but we've created a um, Slack channel. Uh, security security assessment working group. Um, I will I'll paste that link as well. Uh, so we have a do the poll. Kind of we're trying to find a slot uh, where people can meet up next week. Uh, if depending on time zone, I know you know Justin Capos um, is in the Eastern time zone now. So we may end up doing like one or two separate sessions. Um, but we're going to start off the brainstorming process and maybe split up into uh, several PRs that we can then work towards. Awesome. Okay. So ask one question. Sure. So we had made the determination um, perhaps a couple of months back that we would only be doing one assessment at a time uh, or we would only like do one more before like taking this pause and 
processing, integrating, reassessing everything. And at that time we had other projects in the queue that had requested for an assessment. I'm speaking specifically about build packs. So perhaps it's worthwhile to reach out to, maybe we don't have the clarity of how long redesigning or, or evaluating, maybe not redesigning, but just reevaluating long is going to take us. So we may want to give them like, hey, it's going to be a while before we get back to you and, t and take it up. Uh, so perhaps, yeah, just some community reach out to, to projects that may be standing by on an assessment to be performed. Um, I, I think that if I know the last time, um, if I wasn't wrong, I think this was Robert was trying to get more people onto um, build packs. Uh, I think if we hit the critical mass to go for the assessment, I don't think there is a need to wait on improvements. I think it's not the the process isn't it, it's fine, right? I I don't think there's anything that's uh, there are any huge red flags that we've seen. Uh, most of the suggestions so far has been, you know, improvements and quality of life things. Um, so I think that we don't want to get in the way if we find that the project has made, uh, is able to put some time in. We found a group of security uh, uh, reviewers to do it. We should go ahead and we shouldn't kind of wait for that. Um, because, you know, it's, sometimes it's, it, it may be difficult to get people back, even saying that, oh, let's push this back by a, a couple of weeks. People may not be free anymore. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I will paste the link to the issue. I think at the time, well, just looking back to the notes, uh, something had come up to Rob, for Robert and I'd stepped up as lead reviewer, but in conversation with Justin uh, elsewhere, not in this thread, I think it's in another issue said, hey, we have a lot of people focused on Key Cloak right now. It's mm -hmm. perhaps we could get another team going in parallel of different individuals. We can like just do a call for participation for other reviewers to jump in but let's, let's just like cap it at, at doing the five and then uh, get to build packs. So I'll paste the issue here. Sounds like we may want to put together a crew yep. and reopen this issue. Yeah, thank, uh, thanks for taking say, that up. I will say my conflict of interest has changed since I put it in there. I will edit there. I have since joined VMware, which happens to be the, the corporate entity behind build packs but there's no no hard conflict i think it'd be more of a soft conflict okay yeah and key clock is kind of just winding yeah. down i think it's is pretty much at the final stages so um i don't think that there is a, uh, a huge overlap there the corporate entity behind build packs is not the correct wording given it's a cncf project um just there are some maintainers from vmware who work on that, which is not a blocker. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, good, good call. It is, it is a correct wording on my part and, and yeah, good clarification. It is a CNCF project. Yeah, Andre, if, uh, want to make, if you want to comment on the issue to kickstart that, uh, that'll be, uh, that'll start the thread. Will do. Perfect. Awesome. Um, Aradna, uh, I know she has to drop off a little early, so uh, maybe we'll split the presentation into two parts of like the intro today and then uh, push out the presentation to the next time. Um, sure. Happy to do that, um, JJ. Thank you. Um, so I'm part of Cloud Security Alliance and a research fellow for them. And we have a number of initiatives right now related to containers and microservices. One of the work groups that I'm leading um, is security controls for serverless or serverless best practices. So as part of that work group, um, we have a white paper that we are publishing and we had lots of interesting discussions about what is serverless, right? 
<laughs> the definition of serverless um, and whether it's just function as a service or it is container as a service, serverless, right? Um, it may be serverless to the consumers, but essentially it does have a, a infrastructure underneath that somebody else is managing. So we decided that the scope of the project is going to, going to be container as a service, like EKS and those kind of services that providers provide to us and function as a service. And with that context in mind, we have kind of developed a draft paper. Um, actually, it's a work in progress. We're still finishing it up. And then um, we've uh, identified the scope um, and the landscape, as well as the use cases that are relevant uh, in the industry to serverless and CAS. And then we've done a detailed threat model uh, related to CAS technologies and deployments, and um, as well as FAS. And then based on those threats, we've identified a number of mitigations and security controls for so each type of deployment. If you have a function as a service deployment, what are the controls that you need to be cognizant of and you know, orchestration of functions and what are the threats there and how do you mitigate them and what security controls you need to put in place? What about runtime detection and response um, for enterprises? And then obviously, um, similarly, security controls for container as a service as well. Um, so there is a lot of overlap in different uh, security controls that different white papers are proposing. Uh, we had done another project at CSA, which was uh, best practices for um, microservices and application containers, similar controls. Um, I mean, subset of those controls apply in this uh, domain as well. So last Friday, we had a discussion between different container working groups at CSA as to how do we bring it all together because um, there, are, there is overlapping content in multiple of these uh, initiatives. So I did mention to them about the SIG security work that we are doing here as well. Um, and it seems like there are some synergies and if you guys are interested, I'll be happy to bring in experts from there and um, set up a cross connect session, um, networking as to how we can collaborate and uh, you know, uh, ultimately they are also nonprofit and this is nonprofit open source as well. Um, it, it is um, for the benefit of the wider user community as well as enterprises who want to leverage best practices. So at a high level, that's what the structure of the paper is. And after the security controls, we are also talking about future direction where security for FAS is going and so on and so forth. But that's pretty much it at a high level. And we can delve deeper into the paper and the contents of it um, in the next, uh, next week's meeting, for sure. Thanks, Aradna. Uh, I think uh, if there isn't, a, there isn't an issue already, uh, I'll probably create an issue. And if you can put the content into that issue and uh, link to the paper uh, prior to next meeting, uh, that'll help the team. Uh, sure, yeah. I can do that. Yeah, I'll do that uh, right after this yeah. call. You're speaking at a Sorry to interrupt. Just speaking at a really high level, we're definitely interested in that. Uh, speaking for myself, I guess that's, you know, highly relevant work for what we're doing. It's relevant to the day job and it's kind of a daily concern for security teams if you're working in AppSec at all. Sure, Mark. I'll connect you to that group. And if you want to contribute in that paper, you're welcome to as well. Okay, great. Let's, um, all right, so Vinay, do you wanna give an update on uh, white paper? Yeah, sure, uh, JJ, thank you. Uh, so as most of you are aware, uh, you know, the team has been uh, working on the cloud native security white paper uh, and uh, there's a lot of progress that's been made and I think uh, uh, the where it is right now is we are, we are, we are pulling the threads together. We, we've had a lot of comments uh, come in and, and we're pulling all those comments, incorporating it. And I think we have another, uh, please correct me, JJ, if we have another couple of weeks, I believe, Thanks. where we are hoping to uh, re receive more uh, comments, make the necessary uh, changes necessary from a, 
uh, you know, pulling the different uh, sections together, as well as making sure that we have the right tone and voice and uh, right level of abstraction uh, and addressing all the needs in terms of how a potential uh, CISO could consume the paper and then also discuss how it could be potentially broken out into multiple other papers to provide a deeper dive. We're also making sure that we have all the relevant sections that require a more or deeper dive uh, represented appropriately in the landscape paper that um, uh, Brandon and team are working on. So, uh, so that's where we are at. And, uh, you know, JJ, myself and Gadi have made uh, some decent progress on the illustrations that we're hoping to provide as companion for the, the narrative as well to, to really help anchor the discussions and provide uh, some better context around the verbiage. So, so that's where we're at and we're shooting for the next two weeks uh, to really pull a lot of this uh, together and have it ready for a, a potential um, uh, a discussion with the broader CNCF team, uh, yes. I believe. Yep, yep, yep. And so that's all I had, JJ. Thanks, Vinay. Um, so few, few other updates. I think Emily is not here, but uh, she's driving the Cloud Native Security Day. Uh, I think it's uh, there is link up. It's supposed to. Uh, it's scheduled for November seventeenth. Um, it's a virtual event, <clears throat> and uh, uh, there is a Slack channel where things are getting discussed about that. And uh, there is a core group that's actually working on putting that event together. And uh, if you do, if anybody is interested in contributing or participating, then that's where, that's where, uh, that's where to go look. Yeah, just to add, add to that as well, I think the discussions, at least the last time we chatted about potentially having kind of, because it's virtual, having kind of like a CTF style kind of thing going on. So, so it's just something interesting. Also yep. to check it out. Yep. Uh, yeah, we're still getting used to the virtual events. So, any, any. It's some, a, some interesting feedback I heard yesterday from presenting at the Open Networking and Telco Summit on Monday was that it would be nice to see shorter, denser sessions because if you have like eight thirty to an hour, like you're competing for the audience attention with the rest of the internet, right, or with their schedules. But if even if you're going to do like longer breakouts, if you could condense like, I don't know, everything that will be on the regular schedule into five minute lightning talks in one hour, people could extract and not miss out, like just get the highlights or whatever the speaker want the audience to walk away. Things we can think about. Oh, nice. I guess, yeah, things are turning to be more like Twitter than <laughs> newspapers. So. No, it's a interesting thing. Uh, I, if you, if there is a feedback that's there somewhere, uh, and if you can post it onto the Six Security Events channel in um, Slack, uh, I think that will help Emily asynchronously. Uh, I will convey this to Emily uh, in in our meeting, but I think if you post it there, it'll help the rest of the team as well. And Quick question, will it be a pre-recorded event or it will be uh, live online? It was, uh, all CNCF events are pre-recorded, right, Brandon? Pre yeah, it's going to be like you've gone, basically. Oh, okay, so it's yeah. pre-recorded. I mean, it's like having more content might not be, uh, like for a longer session might not be a problem uh, because if you're watching online, you can, like, if it's not, online event and pre-recorded it's much easier to ski but for like for some folks who are just starting in the area having some background information and data might be helpful uh so they might not skip basically yeah that, that's a good point if it's if it's on demand it's it's less of a concern to like compete for attention but just having a a reference digital brochure of of all the content with like a little bit of, of information or just like how does title all together or here's like 
Yeah, you, I guess like abstracts kind of accomplish that. And if, and if you put it on the side, I don't know. Like, I think I'll start talking in circles pretty soon. So I'll, I'll start writing things down <laughs> and put it on the event thread. Yeah, it would be easier probably to if 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 there is an easy way to split it into chunks. Like here's an intro, here's a main kind of part uh, to go along with presentation result. Like basically needs to do a uh, tran transcribe of all the all the talk for the details. But yeah, something like that. Okay. Totally. Yeah. 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 So uh, there are uh, issues that are on the that are being logged. Uh, we'll be uh, sort of triaging them. Um, any volunteers to help triage uh, issues is much appreciated. Uh, there are real uh, some real interesting issues around. Uh, <clears throat> Oscar uh, and compilation flags, and then there is also assessment outline, which I think it 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 locked. Uh, so those are all still still in flight. Help there is highly appreciated. Uh, what kind of issues and where they where 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 I, I can find them? Yeah, so we posted on this. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, some any uh, yeah take take a look at those issues if anybody uh, feels uh, they have enough to offer on any of the issues. Uh, so what what do you mean by triage? You you want us to like see if they're topics to bring back to the meeting or? Yeah, I mean. Um, if there are topics that interest you in terms of like, this is something that I want to take up and start working on, then you can. The ones that you want to bring up to the meeting where you think it'll be useful, uh, we can do that as well. Uh, in addition, um, I'll go through my own thing of like seeing if there is a fitment of any issues that I could possibly bring that back to the team to discuss. Uh, I'll do that as well. Okay. So that was kind of a pun when I said topics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you, thanks, Mark. Uh, so um, that's most of the most of the update. Uh, Brandon, any any more updates? Anything to add? Yeah, I, I guess um, um, two things. So. So one of it, um, it's actually not really related to six security, but <laughs> a couple of us, uh, uh, you know, myself, Eli, uh, and Andres, and Emily as well, plus others are working on a Spiffy Spire book. Um, so that will be something to look out for <laughs> um, probably near towards the end of next month. Um, uh, talking about Spiffy Spire and, and kind of the open source projects and deployments and so on. It's a lot of good content. Uh, so I so just want to throw that out there. Um, Brandon, and, yeah. you, you want to talk a little bit about how we're writing it? I, I'm not sure everyone's familiar with a book sprint yeah. methodology. Yeah, it's, it's essentially taken like a process that's been designed to take zero content and go like from concepting to production in three to five days in a physical room but in current times this has been adapted to two week online over zoom so think of like pair programming times 10 and like a group of 12 of us have been like long long hours pretty like long hours like 10 to 12 hours a day undivided attention on writing a book online with others. And we did first week last week, we're getting together next week again. Nice. Yeah, I yeah. heard you like that, Brandon or Eli. Yeah, I guess sir, the value of uh, it would be to get an early feedback from uh, people who wants to 
read through these and uh, provide the feedback. I think it's in a condition right now where it is a little bit too early. We still identify the gaps that we need to fill. But after next week, I think it will be in a, in a good enough state to share with the rest of community and get another feedback and see if we kind of missing something important in there. But it will be close to uh, the finish line and we'll just need to polish it up. Nice, nice. Back to you, Brandon. Didn't mean to cut you off. No worries. Well, the second point I was going to point to you as well on the, the cloud native build packs. Um, um uh, i think you said that um we're still looking for another two three reviewers for this yes whoever's interested in participating in this security assessment uh love to cut with your help whether you've done an assessment before or this will be your first one uh happy to chat if you're on the fence or undecided but if if it's something you want to go just uh, link to the issues in there. The build packs team has completed the self assessment already. A link is in the issue, so that's something you can start uh, looking at. But I would point you first to go over the assessment process and get like familiarized with the timelines and, and process that we go through. Is there a, like a standard process for assessment? Yes. yes. Yeah, I was just going to say the same. Uh, so typically, I think what's been done is that there's an issue, and then I think there's someone who takes up the baton, and then uh, you know, asks for uh, other people to join in the assessment. Has is there a placeholder for an issue on, for this one? Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, I think Andrew just put it in the. All right, got it. Thank chat. you. Yeah, issue 377. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe Andres, if, if you could also fill out um, the, the details of it as well in the, in the kind of like the, the first comment, um, like who's the project security lead and so on. I don't have the rights to do so. Oh, you don't have the rights to do so. Oh, right, because it's not created by you. Yeah. Um, Different living, so you have to. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Let me let me do yeah. that then. If you could, if you can just put details in, or if I can figure out how to give you permissions to add that. I'll maybe, maybe I don't know if if you assign it to me. I can't even assign it to myself. I don't know if assigning confers any any like elevation of privileges to edit the issue alone. Okay, I just did that. So maybe give it a go. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. We can we can we can figure this out offline. Yeah. <clears throat> um, for the for the book sprint, if you. Uh, Brandon, if you think you'd want to have like either a presentation or a review from the rest of the group, uh, do you mind creating an issue, putting that on agenda whenever you feel like it? It will be ready. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. I think probably near the end of the end of next month, which will be in time because we already have a packed schedule all the way to October. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, that'll be good uh, before. We forget about that that'll be a good thing uh, it'll also be a good thing for the for the team uh, to have a preview of that uh, in general yeah cool. yeah and outside of the topic alone it's just a fascinating way to collaborate to produce mm -hmm. content you elicit the knowledge and experience from the subject matter experts from their heads and start just dumping it in writing and just through iterative process it becomes a really consistent voice yeah and you get to work with illustrators who are just riffing off your ideas and and turning it into images it, it becomes pretty neat nice nice yeah 
I'll read, I'll read through that. Um, good, I think that's mostly what we had for our agenda today. Um, if I have a small, very yeah. small administrative question. Go for it. I've uh, been described a few times now. Uh, do you really need the, the table template thing? I, like, I always type in the one box there. Do we really need the table? Uh, it, it was on uh, it was a trial feature. What, what <laughs> it was a feature that that we put on trial to see how it, how how it's working. Okay. So good to get that feedback. So I guess I failed the trial. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we should reformat because I had that same uh, issue too when I was a scribe and then I was willing like you just go into one box and then you do the whole stuff in that one box. Uh, my age might be better to put horizontal two boxes for two different scripts because uh, then separate yeah. it up so that it does, doesn't have to. No, the, the, the two columns, the columns are great. I'm just talking about the rows. Like there is a box for uh, GitHub PRs, like for one, attendance and designating stripes. No one writes anything there, never. Okay. So you yeah. just delete those rows. I mean, just, del just, delete, just delete them. <laughs> Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I want to. I just wanted to ask if there's a special reason they're there. No, I think we. I think it's a that's good feedback. I think we should spend some time uh, reformatting the the template. Yeah. yeah. Brandon, was that optimized for both uh, presentation slash working session? Right. Well, yeah. So so this was uh, originally we we had kind of like a single sequential sequential log, right, and then. Um, uh, Matthew uh, Garcia, uh, when he was facilitating the meetings, um, found it would be better to have separate scribes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the idea was to kind of um, be it. able to read across the same topics rather than it being like offset at different uh, different rows. Yeah. Uh, but it seems like um, maybe we can do some consolidation of that. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we can still keep the the separate rows for each um, topic, but we don't have to pre-categorize every row. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's a good feedback. All right. That, we'll we'll open an issue for that. If you want to open that issue, <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah, also. sure, no problem. Yeah, yeah, and then we can work from that. Cool. So um. Yeah, if there is there isn't uh, uh, much that anyone has any updates or uh, to add, then we can give back twenty minutes of the time to the rest of the group. Awesome, and JJ, next week is it? Uh, we're gonna have the confidential computing consortium mm -hmm. presentation, right? Yeah, yeah, CCC okay. and uh, the uh, I think the agenda is there at the top of the doc, uh, and depending on the time availability, I think Aradhana's uh, part two presentation is something that we can see if we could slot it in. <laughs> uh, but uh, Andre is facilitating the meeting, so I'll just add. Uh, Add that to the agenda item, and Andre, I'll leave it up to you to see uh, if you can actually slot two presentations, or if you can, if it's not, uh, if it's just going to be one. Okay, I I've been working with Eva to wire that up. So should we shoot for thirty to thirty-five minute presentation? Would that um, seem sensible? Yeah, I mean, it seems it seems sensible. But... I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll add it, but uh, um, do what makes sense for the presentation. Uh, and we can always push, we can create a pipeline for our other later if we have to push push the part two presentation out. So, okay. yeah. so guidance, make sure we, we give the topic justice. Now, uh, if there was room for a second presentation, do we want to take something up from future meetings? and reach out to these folks to say to 
see if they want to talk about it or should we just leave it like open? Um, usually presentations, at the end of the presentation, there is a decent number of questions and answers. So I'm, when there is a presentation, I'm less worried about uh, the, the timing aspect of it. <clears throat> uh, so there'll be a few updates in the presentation and then we'll, there'll be probably a Q&A. So it'll probably take the whole, whole hour up, which is okay. Uh, if there is two presentation, it usually, like early on when we used to run, it usually becomes like a rush through thing, uh, which may not be ideal either. So I'll, it's up to the team. How do we feel about having two presentations versus one with the Q&A? I think one with the Q and A seemed to work fine in the past. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree too. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So. Yeah. So that's for next week. And uh, thanks you all. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining and thanks for the help. Have a good one. Take care. Bye. Good one. Good to meet you all. Thanks for being here. Bye.